Hi, I'm Rohan. And the other person that you see on the deck is Sam Hansen. He's a data scientist at Yelp. He gave me a lot of great feedback, did the wonderful graphs you're going to just see. He's also an integral part of the Yelp experimentation team. First, some quick introductions. I'm the product manager for uh, Yelp Marketplace. Before that, I was the product manager for experimentation at Metrics, where I led the team that de designed the experimentation program and the engineering team that builds the platform. These are some of the other organizations I've been associated with in the past. For those of you who don't know, Yelp is a local search engine that helps you find the right local business for your need. Our mission is connecting people with great local businesses. More importantly, why are we here today? I'm here to talk about the story of A to B. This graph summarizes the evolution of the Yelp experimentation program. The y-axis of the number of experiments started and the x-axis of the timeline. A, when there was no standardization, no single platform, no centralization, to all the way to B, when we were running over a thousand experiments in here, everything was standardized and we had a centralized experimentation platform. So how did we go from A to B? We focused on five pillars. Establish baseline, integrate technically, boost trust in platform, faster time to value, and integrate culturally. Before we dive into it, let's talk about how experimentation at Yelp looks like right now. We have sophisticated experimentation needs. We conduct randomized tests, non-randomized tests, feature rollouts, dog food changes. With such needs and the growing footprint of the company, we soon realized the need to invest in a dedicated experimentation platform, which gave birth to the idea of Bunsen. Bunsen is our internal experimentation platform. Bunsen as in the Bunsen burner. We aspire to be the one-stop shop for all experiment creation, deployment, and analysis needs at Yelp. Bunsen has enabled shipping multiple winning features. The growth team found out that adding users' name boosts people adding preferences. The reviews team found out that new push copy led to users writing more reviews. And the consumer team found out that adding popular dishes boosts menu activity. And all of this has led to incremental revenue of millions of dollars. However, for you to appreciate why I'm so excited about how B looks like, you need to understand how the word before Bunsen looked like. Like, what, it, what was A? And if I had to use one picture to summarize it, this would be it. It worked. You could make decisions. But for you to run an experiment, everyone else had to do their job correctly. A collision was always around the corner. As I mentioned, we had extensive experimentation needs. But all of these experiments were happening in independent silos. Team A did not know what team B was working on and what was the impact of each other's experimentation on each other's product. There was a tremendous amount of wasted effort. Just the analysis took 7 to 14 days. In addition to engineers building the experiment, experiment being designed, and something goes wrong, you have to do it all over again. And all of this was leading to product velocity slowing down. So how did Bunsen reach 80% adoption and over, and over 1,000 experiments? First up, I wanted to establish a baseline. I set out to understand the current state of affairs and identify opportunities in the process. I broke the Yelp experimentation program into four parameters, volume, performance, health, and correctness. Number of experiments per quarter. How sophisticated were our experiment needs? Were we conducting 10 experiments in quarter or like 10,000 experiments? This also educated the kind of computation layer we wanted to build. Mean time to results. How much time did it take for someone to come up with an idea and have experiment, resu experiment results in front of them to make a decision? The uptime and failure distribution of the isolated pieces of experimentation infrastructure floating around here. And most importantly, the proportion of statistically correct decisions. With these numbers in hand, I went, I broke down the experimentation process at Yelp into a seven step process. And tried to identify the stakeholders in all of these uh, steps. I conducted qualitative interviews and dug into data to figure out where did the key frustrations and areas of opportunities lie. Building an experimentation program is a non-trivial investment. We're talking about millions of dollars of investment before we start reaping any benefits. You need to know that you're moving in the right direction. This helped me get a stack rank list of priorities. With that in hand, 
I moved on to integrate technically. I wanted to ensure people had clear and easy to interpret results, prompt and accurate decision making, and experimentation was a self serve process with Yap. Early 2019, we launched a scorecard, which was this easy to easy to read UI for which contained all the uh, all the information that you needed to make a decision on an experiment. Before we launched the scorecard, there was no standardization. Results were floating around in multiple different formats from notebooks, SQL statements. It was all over the place. It was really hard for two teams to share results. However, the scorecard changed all of that. We gave people a de facto way to share results. Everyone started speaking the same language. Now you can pick anyone at Yelp and they'll be able to tell you what every segment in the scorecard means. People saw value and we saw an uptick in adoption on the platform. One of the biggest problems with experimentation at Yelp has been either not having enough samples or enough power or having way too many samples and leading to wastage of resources. To tackle that problem, we launched an automated power analysis tool. This tool helped people find out the exact sample size they needed. Nothing less, nothing more. You could make decisions in the most optimized amount of time. If you, would, if you would try to stop an experiment before it had adequate power, it would prevent you from doing that. And it would also alert you when you were running the experiment unnecessarily. The automated power analysis helped move the, the correctness metric up significantly. Even though documentation seems like a solved problem in the industry, but once you try, try to scale a new platform or a new process to a 6,000 people company, all of this begins to crumble. We identified this early on and invested in a dedicated documentation tool, which acted as a self-serve guide for experimentation, help people figure understand what Bunsen is, and also understand how they could hook up Bunsen to their technology stack. It had a search layer on top that helped you find out what find whatever you needed quickly and promptly. If it did not have what you needed, it would direct you towards other people who could. This helped reduce the number of questions the engineering team was getting by a lot. Next up, boosting trust. We build safeguards, cross-team intelligence, and increase transparency to do that. We launched Bunsen pre-checks. No experiment was allowed to go in front of the consumer or go to production before it passed all the pre-checks, such as sample ratio mismatch, or um, users not getting cohorted. All these checks were checks right before the experiment was started or in the early days of the experiment. Now, instead of continuously writing SQL statements or continuously looking at logs, you could sleep in peace at night. And if there was anything going wrong with your experiment, you would be automatically notified by Bunsen. This helped you find out if there was anything wrong with your design much before than you could in the pre-Bunsen era. Garden metrics. This has been one of the most impactful projects my team has worked on. Garden metrics are the most important metrics of the company that you can only damage by a certain threshold. I worked with the product leadership to define these metrics and we ended up with 19 of them. Now, 19 Garden metrics are computed for every single experiment over billions of events every single day. And if an experiment violates a Garden metric, the experiment owner and the Garden metric owner have to meet to discuss trade-offs. Garden metrics have helped us save millions of dollars in revenue by avoiding shipping losing features. Ads experience found out that a new ad format damaged ad revenue. Search found out that a buggy infrastructure change was actually affecting the search experience and this was only identified because it violated a guardrail metric. And local services found out that a new design actually decreased the projects being created and none of these things shipped. In order to increase accountability and increase people's confidence, we launched Bunsen Health. Bunsen Health enabled our stakeholders to look inside Bunsen, to look inside all the, all the components that made Bunsen possible. You could also sign up for automatic alerts and notifications. If Bunsen was in a degraded state or if Bunsen was just not working, you would automatically find out about it. This helped our stakeholders gain confidence on how robust Bunsen was. If you cannot provide people value in a reasonable amount of time. Adoption is very, very hard. We focused on reducing the time to value and we invested in that early on. The build measure learn cycle 
in the pre bunsen era took several days manual analysis building uh, ad hoc experimentation infrastructure writing all of these metrics we took all of this and shrank it to under a day now if anything was working or not working you would find out about it daily this was a significant upgrade from how things were happening before you could you could ship things that were working much earlier you could ship you could not ship things that were that were causing a negative effect and identify that earlier as well indicating culturally this has by all means been the hardest thing i've had to do at yelp i want to educate to up level standardize the process and monitor decision accuracy in early 2019 we launched an experimentation training program for product managers in a couple of months 95% of the pm passed the experimentation training this had them understand why we were making the decisions we were making and why they should invest in the experiment why they should invest in moving on to bunsen and we saw an uptick in adoption along with the training we also launched the bunsen deputies program this deputies program was aimed at up leveling uh, various employees in different parts of the company up leveling their knowledge of statistics experimentation and bunsen it was a 3 week program conducted by data science and pms this not only helped us create a bunsen fan club but also helped us create data driven product evangelists across here a large part of experimentation happens outside the tech that you build over gmail over slack over google docs and a lot of this is happening in an unstructured format this was making it for the making it difficult for the data science team to provide feedback on experiment design to tackle that problem i created a pep a product enhancement proposal it's a template to document your experiment design which made it which ensured that pms added all the necessary information designed had a checklist in mind to while designing an experiment and handed over all the information in a correct format to, to the data science to provide them feedback in a prompt manner this idea became so popular that we expanded this to product design and uxr as well now each product that is created at yelp starts on a pep monitor decision accuracy this is my favorite slide this is what every investment that the every investment that we've made has led to this i partnered with data science to conduct a meta analysis in which we picked up a sample set of experiments and dug through every single one of those experiments to find out what percentage of those were statistically sound in the first edition that we conducted in 2018 we found out that x percent of those decisions were statistically correct x was in a very flat ring number but what i am very very proud of is that all the investments that we've made we dug deep into those experiments that were failing launched a lot, lot new feed launched a bunch of new features trained people up level people and all those investments have led to a 118% improvement in stats, number of statistically correct experiments in the next meta analysis in the post in the bunsen era the likelihood of a decision being statistically correct at yelp is two times than what it was in the pre bunsen world so putting it all together these have been these have been my primary learnings scaling and managing a platform for a 6000 people company for millions of users adoption doesn't necessarily mean high quality decision making people will find a way to shoot themselves in the foot more insights just means more questions you give if you keep on giving people another layer of analysis they will just keep on asking for more this problem can be tackled by education and most importantly it is not about the tech it's about teaching people how to use it So, if you want to scale a platform, an experimentation platform, focus on five pillars: establish baseline, integrate technically, boost trust in platform, pass the time to value, and integrate culture. Feel free to reach out on LinkedIn if you have any questions.